Shocking reports confirm that David Benavidez refuses to fight the undisputed super middleweight champion Canelo Alvarez. David Benavidez has been chasing Canelo Alvarez for some years now. The former two-time super middleweight champion, David Benavidez fought his way into the mandatory position for Alvarez, who has held all four belts in the division since 2021. David, despite waiting at Canelo's weight class for many years, the superstar Alvarez refused to have any talks to make the fight happen and instead moved on to fight Edgar Berlanga. In an interview with Probox TV, Chris Algieri wasn't surprised at all that Canelo has taken the Edgar Berlanga route rather than Chris Eubank Jr. or Benavidez as originally anticipated. Questions to help me answer them. Chris Algieri in studio, joining us via Zoom, of course, Paulie Malinaz. You got two champs who can break it down. You know what makes my job super easy? Getting you guys on a rant about Canelo Alvarez. First off, let's talk about the opposition. Look, when you look at Edgar Belenga, he is the mandatory. He is undefeated. There are certain things working in his favor. But Chris, how surprised are you that this is a selection over? We thought it would be Chris Eubank Jr. for a variety of reasons. What's your thoughts? I'm, I'm not that surprised. I mean, yes, I thought it was going to be Chris Eubank too. But, um... You know, Berlanga has been a name that's been floating around the Canelo sweepstakes for quite some time. Reports allegedly claim that Canelo Alvarez would be fighting Chris Eubank Jr. on Mexican Independence Day this year, but the reigning champion was not interested in bringing Eubank in the States, since that was a matchup the Mexican fans were not interested in. Moreover, the UFC had their own set of competitions being held on Mexican Independence Day, which would hurt the ticket sales. Canelo made a bold move by accepting to fight Edgar Berlanga in September this year. Chris Algieri is surprised to see the drama that took place with Eubank's name mentioned with Canelo and then suddenly replaced by Edgar Berlanga. Furthermore, Algeri was asked about his thoughts on Benavidez moving up in weight to fight the winner of the Better Biev versus Bival fight. Chris supported Benavidez and his team by saying that it's a smart move and they shouldn't wait for Canelo. Very, very true. Both take on all-time greats, but who's left out of this? David Benavidez, of course, looks like he's moving on to the winner of Better Viev versus Bivol, of course, later this year. I, the right move, of course, he's not waiting around for, for Canelo, but he's moving to take on the winner of a fight. There's going to be a rematch clause in this fight. So once again, a lot of bumps in the road. Chris, you are brimming with emotion. What do you want to say? Listen, I love the way David Benavidez and his team are moving. They're, they're masters of their own fate. They're not waiting around for Canelo. David Benavidez's promoter claimed that they will be taking the winner of the Better BF Bevel fight next year on Canelo Alvarez's Cinco de Mayo date in May 2025, which seems to be a really cunning move by David's team. They are aiming to go head to head with Canelo. Boxing enthusiasts were confused at Benavidez fighting on the same date as Canelo. So one fan posted, so instead of fighting Canelo, he wants to fight on a date when Canelo wants to fight, make it make sense. Another boxing enthusiast tried to make sense of the horrible mix-up by saying Benavidez is likely looking at another year of waiting to fight for the title. We're likely going to see a Bivol versus Better Biev rematch after they meet, which will benefit Benavidez because it will give him another fight to get used to the weight. Hopefully he finally gets his shot at another title. Algeri further commented on David's bold move to stay at light heavyweight 175 pound weight class. He said that it's the right thing to do and David is the person who has the right mindset of a fighter. Chris claimed that David has the right answers to every interview that they have had with him. Benavidez just wants to fight and he doesn't care about the money, he just wants to prove himself in the ring. Benavidez claimed that he wants all the smoke so his name can be remembered in history and that is the quality of a young champion. Chris Algieri further commented that Benavidez is making power moves. Algieri seemed skeptical at whether staying at the current weight class would be a smart choice to make for Benavidez. Chris added, is it going to be the right move? I don't know, like you said, all those moving parts, the rematch clauses, the injuries, the older fighters. Benavidez sometimes can't even make it to fight sometimes, he might be left out in the cold. Furthermore, Pauli Malinaggi was asked if Benavidez could be given the chance to fight Canelo sometime next year after he fights the winner of the Better Biev Bival fight. Pauli explained that there may be rematch clauses in the fight and other hidden agreements. Yeah. And look at this promotionally, Paulie, Mauricio Suleiman saying he gets the winner of Bivol versus Better BF. There's got to be a rematch clause in that fight. Would you trust a word that Suleiman says after, in your words, protecting Canelo for two years? What's your thought on Benavides kind of taking the word that I'll get this big fight some point probably early next year? Yeah, I, I'm not really quite sure. Um, you, you, you make a good point, Jimmy. I, you, there, you have to see how that fight goes. There may be a rematch and maybe a demand for a rematch. Could be an injury. 
Yeah, anything. Could be an injury could be a lot of things. I'll tell you what. I like the way Benavidez is moving in that he's chasing the world championship. Pauli Malinagi said that if David Benavidez stayed at 168 and fought Morel, he may win or lose. Depending on the outcome of that fight, he may still not get the chance to fight Canelo. Pauli completely violated Canelo Alvarez by saying that he's the biggest duck in the history of boxing. You will not find a bigger duck than Canelo Alvarez because he's been avoiding the top contenders all this time. If someone were to take a microscope and find ducks in boxing history, they will not find anyone greater than Canelo. Malinagi further commented that if David fights Morel, then it's not a world title shot, so he may not get the recognition he deserves, and to top it off, the fight with Morel would be a really tough fight for Benavidez. Pauly further explained the irony behind Canelo ducking Benavidez, Morel's not going to be able to get a title shot at 68 either, because once Canelo is done ducking Benavidez, he's still gonna have Morel around, who's gonna be your top contender, and he's not gonna fight him either. So you know he's gonna be in the same predicament unfortunately, so this guy's gonna go down in history as the two of the, the two top two biggest ducks in the history of boxing as a champion. Malinagi further commented that it would have been better for Canelo to vacate the titles because it would have been much less embarrassing. Many champions in the past have vacated titles before, and there's nothing wrong with that. Chris Algieri interrupted Pauly on his remarks of Canelo going down in the history books as the biggest duck. He pointed out that the hardcore boxing fans would know that Canelo avoided a fight with two guys in his division, but that will not be written in the history books. Moreover, Pauly said that when you look at a boxer's career, then it makes you wonder who that boxer defended titles against, and then people will know what actually happened. Pauly painfully admitted that we are in an era where fighters are avoiding fights more than ever. Additionally, Chris pointed out that James Lights Out Tony was interviewed about the comparison of boxers in this generation, and the previous generation where he said that his generation was way better because everybody fought everybody. Right now, the irony is that fighters can avoid each other for years at a time, and don't ever have to fight each other. In addition, Pauly gave the example of Riddick Bo when he ducked Lennox Lewis, you could do the what Riddick Bo did. That was a big duck too with Lennox Lewis where you put the belt in the garbage can. But at least Lennox then, the weight class was able to move. Lennox picked up the world title, you know, there was a demand for that. Well, he gave up the belt. Malinagi additionally commented that the weight class ended up moving and there were still fights going around as he compared Lennox Lewis and Riddick. Pauly painfully stated that there is a log jam when Canelo has all the belt because Benavidez wants to go out for a title shot, so he moved up in weight to 175 instead of turning gray on 168. Benavidez is making a very risky move going up to 175 to fight the winner of the Better Bev Bevel fight because he doesn't know if there are rematch clauses in place or how long he would have to wait in line. But Erbiev is close to 40 years of age, so he may end up retiring at 175, claiming to be the undefeated champion, and that will prove to be a loss for Benavidez. Chris Algieri pointed out the fact that the sport of boxing is being hurt when the top boxers don't fight the top challengers more than it hurts Benavidez, and the same happened with Boots Ennis. Better be of his 40. Better be could win that fight and very well walk up to the sunset and say, I'm the man at 175. I'm retired, undefeated, 100% knockout ready if he is to knock out Bivol. So this is a lot of ways that this could happen. But champ, to your point about the log jam, and I think we look at it like, oh, that's hurting Benavidez. It's hurting the sport. This only happens to the best fighters in the in the weight class below the the op, the op, you know the ultimate level. Th this happened with um, with Boots with Boots Ennis. Yep. Algeri painfully described the story of Boots Ennis when he was stuck in the mix of Errol Spence claiming to fight Crawford in 2023, just like Benavidez is stuck in the mix of facing Canelo. Boots Ennis got left on the sidelines because Errol was preparing to face Crawford, and Ennis waited around for a long time when he could have been making money or winning better fights. Algeri claimed that David and Boots are one of the best fighters in the world, but we are not seeing them fight very often. On the other end, former professional boxer Antonio Antonio Tarver was asked if Canelo's legacy could be hurt if he avoids Benavidez and goes on to fight Edgar Berlanga. Antonio responded the same as Pauly that Canelo is on the business side of things. Switching gears a little bit, Canelo's been rumored to possibly be fighting Chris Eubank. Uh, it could happen in the UK, they're saying. Berlanga's in the pot. If he takes either of those fights and he doesn't fight Benavidez, do you think he's hurting his legacy in any way? I wouldn't say hurting his legacy right now. You know, we got to understand Canelo is on the business side of the game. Antonio was in favor of Canelo taking the shots to fight who he wants because he has fought his way up through hard work.
Tarver believes that a fighter's career is very short-lived, so anytime that they have a chance to make their own decisions and take control of the situation, they should take that chance. Antonio believes that Canelo has earned his spot, but before he retires, he should consider giving the fans what they want. Antonio further commented on Canelo's mindset before he officially retires. Before it's all over, give the fans that one fight that they, that we all want to see. And I think he'll do that. I think eventually before he retired, especially if Benavidez continues to look good, it's a fight that's inevitable. It has to happen. Furthermore, Antonio was asked whether Canelo is ducking Benavidez or if it's just pure business. Tarver laughed while he responded that Canellis was definitely not running to sign up to the fight, so that may have some meaning. Tarver further said that Canelo may have some doubts on the back of his head, and as champions, it is the responsibility to address those doubts. There will always be an answer to those critics. Furthermore, Pauly described the insanity of the sport of boxing. He said that boxing is not a sport anymore, it's a business, and guys like Canelo represent the most money so they can turn the sport in their favor. Even though boxing is sold as a sport, it's not really a sport, it's a money game. If Canelo doesn't represent the money, he would have been stripped off of the belts, and Crawford could have beaten him like an egg a long time ago. In the meantime, Pauly said that we should enjoy the Canelo versus Berlanga fight. It's the easiest fight for Canelo right now, and the other two fights with Benavidez or Morel are not winnable. Chris Algieri commented on David's bold move of fighting on the same date as Canelo. Algieri was also worried that this will give Canelo another reason not to fight Benavidez because Alvarez has already stated that Benavidez doesn't respect him so he's not going to get the fight. Jaime Mungia, on the other hand, respected Canelo so he got the chance to face Alvarez this year. Chris thinks that Canelo is making useless excuses but he also commended Benavidez for putting the pressure on the super middleweight champion Alvarez. Moreover, Pauly talked about Canellis' excuses for fighters being more respectful towards him. Pauly said, think about the respect that's just that's just an excuse, because Andre was as respectful as it could be when he asked Canelo at the post-fight press conference at one of his fights when he was going to give him his shot. Andre was as respectful as it could be when Canelo wants to duck you, Canelo will duck you. You know what I mean. Pauly mocked Canelo by saying that if he were Benavides, then he would be mocking Canelo's mother, his grandmother, his kids, because Canelo Canelo is never going to fight me whether I respect him or not. Malinagi further stated that Canelo would know that I am better than him and I could run him over like a train, so he deserves to be disrespected at that point. Additionally, Polly was concerned whether it was a smart move to face Canelo on the Cinco de Mayo date from a business perspective because Canelo still maintains the business. In another interview, Gabe Rosado was asked about which matchup was better between Canelo fighting Benavidez at 168 or 175 pounds. Gabe would love to see Canelo and Benavidez at 168. I'm sure you saw Benavidez's performance when he was at 175. Yeah. Uh, Vazdiek, again, hard yeah. to pronounce. So you saw, if you saw Benavidez perform at 175, and we've seen Canelo lately at 168. Obviously, we're showing a little bit of wear and tear. It's normal. Uh, he's been fighting since 15. Where do you see that fight, uh, Canelo Benavides? It's obviously we all want to see that, but he fights, his, fights him at 175 or 168. We saw Canelo fight at 175 before when he lost. What is the better matchup in one weight class? No, I, I would like to see the Benavides Canelo at 68. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? And I think that, you know, I think Canelo just shows what. His, his his pedigree and and what he did against Munguia, mm -hmm. where it wasn't even a close fight. Rosado commented on the Canelo Benavidez matchup. He said that Benavidez is the bigger guy, but Canelo is the veteran, and he's clearly more experienced. Gabe does not believe that Canelo is ducking Benavidez, rather, it's more of a business thing. Gabe further added that when Canelo was climbing the top, he was competing for becoming a world champion, and now that he's on the top, his goal is to maximize the money. Rosado gave the example of Floyd Mayweather as he compared both Canelo and Mayweather's career. Gabe complimented Canelo's achievements by saying, if he retires right now, he's a Hall of Famer. I think it's more about the business side, and that's why that fight maybe isn't happening, because he's like, all right, you all want that fight, but that's gonna cost you all. Gabe Rosado does not believe that Benavidez is too big or too dangerous for Canelo, so he concluded by saying that it's all about the business. Canelo is going insane by requesting Turkey Al Al Sheikh to give him $200 million to fight Benavidez, and Gabe thinks that it's a crazy request, but likewise, the pay-per-view 
numbers are going to be insane as well. Rosado added sarcastic remarks by saying that you could sell out an entire soccer stadium with the Canelo David fight. This intense matchup would do pay per view numbers in the millions, and the cost of the pay per view would be exceedingly high as well. Furthermore, when WBC President Mauricio Suleiman confirmed that Benavidez would stay at the light heavyweight division and vacate his interim super middleweight belt, at which Canelo lies, the fans were absolutely furious. Diehard boxing fan Chris Cutanio said Benavidez versus Dimitri Bival would be a good fight since it seems we'll never get Benavidez versus Ducker Canelo. Another boxing fan responded to the Twitter post by Mauricio. He said that he can't keep on supporting Canelo because Alvarez keeps ducking Benavidez. He's clearly not up to the challenge. Meanwhile, David Benavidez has supporters of his own. David's supporter Louis said Benavidez deciding to retire from the weight bullying and go after the guys his size is something I can respect. This is a part of his career that I can come to support. Everything prior was always hype to me. Dude looked good against smaller competition because he was supposed to. I don't believe he's a monster at 175, but I'm definitely interested in finding out now. Another supporter commented in favor of Benavidez as he said that Canelo has been done Ducking Benavidez for three years, and he would just be going in circles. Bival already claimed that he would be fighting David if he wins. Gene Philippe, however, said that Bival is going to knock Benavidez back into the super middleweight division, and it seems as though Canelo won the duck. Will David Benavidez fight Canelo in the near future? What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments below, and as always, subscribe for more content like this.